Why do we fall? Ba so we can learn to pick ourselves up. What's up guys? We're back today with the weekly update as well as the bait rework. So here we go. So let's get right into this week's events as well as the rewards for all players, whether you're a veteran or new, free to play or a spender. All right, team, the main event for today is Bates Change, so let's go over it. I want to talk about his active as well as all his passives on the spot. So you guys are not confused with his entire toolkit. So let me break it down to you. Make sure you grab some snacks and pay attention. All right, though, Nether Strike, he's going to deal 350% of his attack to the enemy with the lowest amount of HP, only going to target one enemy with his active. The thing is that he has a 48% chance to deal double damage it's literally times two and i'll explain this in detail as well as 36 percent chance to do four times damage now what amplifies this of course attack as well as skill damage armor reduce and of course weakened debuffs from heart watchers mark or even cruises weakened debuff so these things will pretty much affect his active damage all right for example let me draw you the picture let's say he deals exactly 100,000 damage against an enemy opponent with the lowest amount of hp so let's say the next fight you have some armor reduces maybe you have cruises weakened debuff maybe you even have a art watcher mark one stack or something like that so let's just round it off let's say he deals 200,000 instead of 100,000 basically i'm just telling you guys that these stats affect his damage, right? His active portion of the 350% of attack. So let's say instead of doing 100,000, he does 200,000 now. But let's say he did get lucky and has that 48% chance to do double damage. So it would multiply, let's say 200,000 into 400,000 or four times into 1.6 million. Pretty simple, right? But just to let you guys know one more time, so holy damage, skill damage, as well as precision, attack, of course, Armor Reduce, Armor Rake, Heart Watcher, and Cruise Debuff do help Nether Strike do more damage. However, Crit is out of the equation. It does not crit. I've made sure to test out the Holy Damage and all that stuff. And you know me, guys. I always, this is what I do. First passive, yes, yeah, Sunder Armor. Everything else is pretty much regular, right? But the Sunder Armor, it's just a cool text for Armor Break. So he has 50% Armor Break. And let's go to the second passive. Whenever a foe dies, increase his self damage reduced by 40% for one round. Now, it does stack, boys. It does stack, but it only lasts one round. Let's say you kill three opponent's heroes. So does Bay get 120% damage reduction? The answer is no, because there is a cap to damage reduction in the game, and that is 75%. So even if you have two stacks and you're using, let's say, Magic Stone Sword, you're not going to turn your Bay into Mr. Invincible. That is not going to happen, all right? But he does have a restore self HP by 200% of attack. He also has attack from his attack damage. And I did forget to mention that when Bay does his active, that he does give himself an attack buff of 80 percent for six rounds which is great and it does stack so everything on paper sounds pretty good so far basic attack is same but skill damage just does not affect the basic attack everything else i mentioned like holy damage armor break armor reduce heart watcher cruise does affect death threat the basic attack the problem with Bade, guys, the problem, as you're seeing, he doesn't have any natural damage reduction, and he doesn't have any CC immunity. So this is going to really affect Bade's tempo during the fight. So unlike Horus, who can still dish out plenty of damage while under CC, thanks to his last passive's counterattack, if Bade is sitting in a CC for a round or two, it's it just by then, the whole his whole team has left the arena whether they're in high heaven or they you know they pretty much won the fight without him and i've seen fights fighting a rainbow literally a mirror except there was a horus instead of bait and when bay was stunned for round one and two 
The rest of the teammates somehow pulled a win, and Bay was literally in a CC, doing less than a million damage. There were fights where Bay was once again stun locked or CC'd in round one, and pretty much did zero damage. And this was pretty frequent because he has no passives that gives him any CC immunity, and most of his damage is tied into doing his active as well as his basic attack. He does have to get off his actives to get the self buff of 80% attack and for him to make a difference he kind of needs two stacks because he his abilities cannot crit and he yeah he does have that 48% chance to do double damage but crit damage guys in this game is doubled and that has been proven multiple times heroes like Aspen who has like built in crit damage or ramp up crit damage as well as uh, natural crit and he just will do a lot more damage ramped up much more quickly than heroes like Vade and of course Horus as well um, he has a lot of ramp up as well Horus is a lot more consistent while under CC or not so it is such a bigger threat for now people are asking me all day the king of shadow faction by far is gonna be Horus all right not Mr. Bade or Lord Bade you can feel pretty safe and confident about building Horus right now my personal score for Bade right now from all the tests I've done I've tried um energy artifacts i've used magic stone sword i've used antlers cane i've used like a, I, just, I use everything speed whatever and it, it just like against mirrors rainbows against redemptions it's not because of bay that he's like they won and I, I remember a fight where Cruz just gave bay back to back to back to back energy and even though that happened it just they still, it was not in Bay's favor and Bay could not turn the tide. My letter grade for Bay right now is going to be a D. Um, I'm, I'm being generous here. <laughs> right? So um, you could rest assured if you had fodder some Bay's in the past. In terms of PvE as well, Bay is not going to just you know take the world of pve by storm he's just barely keeping up with horus even with heart watcher as well as bail rain and cruise and all of that stuff so yeah bait i mean on paper he looks amazing but in actuality on paper he looks amazing with that sunder armor special text um <laughs> some someone didn't understand what sunder armor was so he had to go online and google it and see what it meant but pretty much yeah it also says in his character sheet that is 50 percent armor break bait is not going to pretty much fit into the end game meta for now all right I know for you Bay fans, we've been waiting for this, but it just hasn't happened just yet. Even his voice text is not updated. He's still a death rider. He's missing his horse. He's missing his past. And the developers, I wish they did him more justice or gave him some more love. I mean, the rework, the pixels and all that, the artwork looks great, but I wish he was a little bit more um closer to horus in terms of pvp i wish bait had a little bit more passive things going on like being able to do damage while under cc or stuff like that i know there are tons of heroes that can do this and having too many of them is kind of eh, a little boring it's like most relevant heroes in today's meta have that kind of advantage whether it be valkyrie or ada or mim or you know of course mim even can't be controlled but his damage is pretty much unstoppable unless you kill him <laughs> or bait's little friend right there I'm just kidding, but yeah, his buddy Horus. As for Starlight Team, you haven't seen an update from me until now. And she pretty much, eh, for Starlight. She is offered in the Shelter event. And of course, like I said, aesthetically, she is so, so amazing. But in terms of actual combat PvP, she's not bringing as much firepower as we want her to in combat. She, we had a high expectation for her, whether it be being attacked by the Starlight Cheeses, the Rainbow Cheese with Aiden, as well as Destroyer and Emily throughout the entirety of my week, as well as trying to attack as well in a Starlight Redemption or Rainbow myself. I'm just not seeing reliable results like a second Valkyrie would in a redemption aura or a single valkyrie in a rainbow aura of course starlight is a little bit more fun to watch and there's that like feeling of this hype where i want her to like not be cc'd or i just want her to do some great big damage but things just need to line up way too well for her to just kick it in even for jesus she literally has like such a low chance to do insane amount of damage so she was a little bit too inconsistent for an end game pvp meta to be very relevant for now but if there's any changes or updates I I just my voice is cracking still but i'll let you guys know about starlight but this is my second update about her as for stone i recommend using crit stone as for artifact if you can get away with the crit staff punish over motor artifact then do so but i 
clearly doubt that because she just needs to stay alive and kicking it so i would recommend like a magic stone sword or even a lucky candy bar if you can spare one but in redemption aura it's way better to just give it to ormus the old man speaking of ormus let's talk about the old man ormus himself the Ormus effect. I've made tons of videos. It's in my playlist as well about Ormus and Redemption. Ormus right now, in terms of the endgame PvP meta, he is going to be the go-to hero for the Fortress faction. And people, you know, that doubt me, there are tons of clips that I've done, experiments, unedited, uncut, where Ormus in Rainbow, in Redemption, in the endgame PvP end, while well, fighting against a Valentino Rainbow or other GVEs as well, Ormus fared better it's just plain and simple math guys overall romus in rainbow or in redemption was a clear contributor to extending the team's life for even an extra round against ada's balance mark it is quite easy to cc an ada when she is using an energy artifact so after round one and two as long as she's not able to reapply a balance mark then you are going to have a little bit higher chance of winning especially if you have your buddy rue Ormus in your team. Don't underestimate Ormus. I've done tons of videos to a point that people just stop watching them. <laughs> they got the point. But there are people out there that still haven't, you know, received the news from high heavens. All right. So Ormus, he's a great hero for PVE. He's going to knock out any other healer in terms of pure healing if you do need it. In the end game PVE scene, it is better to bring damage dealers that have attack reduce or attack steal better than wasting a slot for a just pure healer like ormus it's better to just bring bell rain with less heals but because she has the attack buff and you can slot in a sia to get that 40 percent attack reduction of course it you know decays over time but still she's going to not only apply the bleed buff to synergize with the wolf pet with the wolf pet no with the wolf pet but yeah sia was going to do a lot of damage a lot more of course than ormus himself so right now sia Bell Rain Heart Watcher is a better utility and attack reduce combo than bringing just an Ormus. Unless, of course, you are a player that cannot access Bell Rain, of course. Whether you're a new player or not a big spender, then if you don't have access to a healer like Vesa or a Bell Rain, then try to get an Ormus if you really are struggling with early game with your guild bosses. All right. Ormus, unlike Starlight and Bade's rework. Ormus is still able to heal the entire team even while in a CC. That is because of his last passive, right? So Heart of Ormus, the third, or is it three? Anyways, he's able to consistently proc his last passive, whether under CC or not. It's going to usually always happen. And that is why Ormus will be more relevant today than heroes like Bade because of being able to do his job while under pressure or in CC, and that is very important in being consistent in today's endgame meta. Last but not least, team, we do have Rosa making an appearance in the Wishing Fountain event. You can tell this guy is not only old, not by his him aesthetically, but just by his passive. Look at his first passive, only 40% HP multiplier block by 35%. Back in the old days, guys, these these heroes only had like one or two, two stats tied to their stat passive. I'm hoping that Rosa pretty much gets some love in terms of reworks because that is on the mind of the developers these days. I know as model is due next, I'm really excited for that. I'm always excited for these. Um, touch-ups or reworks but i hope rosa also get his shoe shined as well because he used to be such a fun hero back in the days in the dodge meta in his current form right now if you're a new player and you don't have access to whether it be um bell rain or cruise or emily rosa is going to definitely help out your pve team not only does he give your allies 20 percent attack not as much as bell rain but he does also have armor reduce of 20 percent to all your opponents with his basic attack his basic attack pretty much reduces all your um, enemies is armor by 20% but his active also reduces their attack 15% as well so he is a pure utility stick he's gonna do almost no damage but he's not that's not what he's for he is there to amplify your teammates in terms of offensive as well as in defensive all right so he's not going to be like a tier one or tier two a great hero to get from the wishing fountain but that's not why we do 
do Wishing Fountain anyway. I usually only spin when I get the light or dark four star shards up in there. So I just try to refresh it every three hours. But lately, I've been really busy. But yeah, that's what you should be doing. Um, especially if you're trying to save up as much light and dark fodder for the heroic miracle or whether it be um, trying to make your first light or dark hero yeah make sure you refresh every three hours don't spend don't spend your gems just take it easy you don't have to complete it the first day unless you're really dying for those um whatever resource that you're needing as for the rest of the heroes on the shelter event corpse demon as well as queen sleepless and Gurk, they're not really relevant in the high end or late pve or pvp scene however we don't know what's going to happen with the reworks i i, I think i hopefully Gurk as well as sleepless get some love as well i mean i hope all those heroes get some love as well because they're so outdated and yeah um if you're a new player you should be completing the shelter event as best as you can anyways whether you're using your friendship summons to get the necessary heroes the four star heroes or you're doing your hero challenges um I hopefully um you guys are able to complete the shelter event not just for the hero copies that you can save in your bags for the heroic miracle event but also for that sweet sweet armor pieces i'm really literally like scraping for armor pieces because of the reoccurring monthly blacksmith event i'm trying not to use tons of gems upgrading my four star to five to five to six so i'm trying to get as much armor as i possibly can and that is what i'm doing by participating in the shelter event i'm saving up the four star shards and the friendship summons in anticipation for the shelter event also, we got the Aspen skin. It looks amazing. It's really tempting me to buy it, but I'm trying not to. I, I think I won't. Like, I, It's been almost six weeks where I haven't used my credit card. I want to keep it that way. I'm going to try my dearest best to not get it, but I'll let you know if I do fail. It does have great stats. It has HP attack as well as crit damage, the stats that he wants. Of course, speed would have been nice. Of course, re uh, damage reduction would have been nice, but hey, can't complain. Aspen can use literally every stand he can get. None of it will be wasted. So he's going to look great in the skin. And he he was due for his skin. What was up with that, guys? Like, he didn't have a skin in his launch. But finally, he got a skin. And unfortunately, it's tied to a $70 deal. But if you got it, congratulations on the Dragon Warrior. So, I don't know what accent that was, but okay. All right, team, hopefully that answered all your questions for this week's events. I know it's not that exciting, but we do have the bait change and all these changes coming up next week. Hopefully is going to be as model. And wow, I do have this itchy gut feeling hint hint that he will get an art rework as well. All right, team. So thanks for tuning in today. If you learned anything or if you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. It really helps out as well as subscribe, support your boy. I'm going to try my best to always keep up with the news in this game as well as other games and try to give you guys some entertainment as well. Anyways, make sure you sub up, thumbs up and share it up with all your idler buddies as well. I'll see you guys during the weekend. Peace.